Welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast with your hosts, Tony Castlenova from DisneyByTheNumbers.com and Park Hopper John from WDWParkHoppers.com. Keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast at all times and get ready for the Disney Parks Podcast. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast. My name is Park Hopper John. I come to you from www.parkhoppers.com. We want to welcome you along with my co-hosts, the lovely, the talented, the incredibly awesome, award-winning Tony Casanova from DisneyByTheNumbers.com. What's up, buddy? I am doing fantastic. Getting off of my uh, Valentine's Day. Uh, Yeah. Valentine's Day was good, right? You had a good Valentine's Day? I had a great, well, yeah, I had a great Valentine's Day. Uh, Sarah and I ran the A1A uh, uh, Fort Lauderdale Half Marathon. Sarah did great, me not so much. But we ended the afternoon going to Funky Buddha Brewery down in uh, Fort Lauderdale, so it was good, it's good, very good. All right, okay, so let's go. That's cool. All right. So we want to welcome you to this week's show. We have a lot of great stuff going on. We want to make sure right off the bat that you visit us over at DisneyParksPodcast.com. And please sign up for our newsletter. We, we've we we've adjusted our site a little bit, and uh, we have a better way to capture those names. So we want to make sure that you sign up for our newsletter because we send out a lot of great information that is not always put on the blog itself. And if you are a subscriber to the newsletter, you get the very first shot at contests or raffles or things that we're doing. You find out before anybody else does. If we're having special events, we let you guys know as soon as we can. And uh, we also make sure that you don't miss a moment of what we're doing here. So definitely want to sign up for our newsletter over at DisneyParksPodcast.com. And we'd like to remind you that this show is sponsored by... Theme park concierge.com. So if you are looking for somebody to take you around the park and show you a good time and do your fast passes and make your meal arrangements and all those kind of things, contact Ramon at theme park concierge.com. You can also call him at 407 257 9973 or visit him at facebook.com forward slash Ramon. VIP concierge or visit them at theparkconcierge.com. Ramon will give you and your family, entire family, VIP service around the park. You can pick the four hour service, which is a mere $200 for a glorious VIP experience in any of the parks. That is Disney. That is, uh, what is that other place over there? Universal. Uh, Bush Gardens or Legoland, any one of those places, or maybe even a combination of those places, or the best deal you will ever see is he will do an entire eight hours for $475. So that's it. That is from rope drop to rope close to the whole thing, the whole entire day, you and your family, $475. You pick the park. And he will uh, do all the planning uh, for you. He'll even do some in-room things if you want for a little extra uh, uh, fee. He'll even do some grocery shopping for you, too, uh, for a little extra fee. And I'm telling you, great service, great person. You'll have a lot of fun. Leave it all up to Ramon. And it used to be a commercial. Wasn't it like, uh, oh, it was a Greyhound commercial. Leave the driving up to to us. Leave the planning up to Ramon because uh, he'll take care of this, the whole thing for you. Just give him enough time uh, to do that. You know, don't call him today and say you want something tomorrow. <laughs> That's just ludicrous. All right. Anyway, go check him out. Uh, you'll uh, really have a good time. And he's I believe he's got the best pricing uh, I've seen for any kind of uh, concierge service. Um, so go check him out. Ramon at theme park concierge dot com. You can email him right there. 
There you go. And right. hey, we want to make sure that you uh, take our survey. Every year we do the annual Disney Parks podcast survey. We want to make sure that you get a chance to uh, fill that out. If you haven't seen that in the newsletter, you can find a link on our website and you can certainly find a link over on Facebook. Uh, and we tweet it out quite a bit. So you want to take that survey for a couple of reasons. A, it lets us know what you want to see, what you want to hear here on the podcast. And one lucky survey taker is going to win. I mean, the Kamehameha awesomeness, <laughs> uh, the most incredible swag bag that I've seen Tony ever give away. I'm not even sure he's going to give it away. It's so good. But it's, uh, it's filled, going away. Trust me. It's <laughs> filled with great Disney collectibles. Plus, Tony's giving away a book. I'm giving away a book, so you're going to be able to uh, to read both Tony and my book. And you know what? That right there is a thirty dollar value. That yeah. makes spending ten minutes of your time, if that, totally worth it. Yeah, we really scaled down the survey this year too. Mm -hmm. um, last year, <laughs> last year I think a lot of the comments were, "Wow, this is long." So this year it should be, "Wow, this is short." <laughs> so, the word I think is thorough. You're very yes. thorough. Yes. Yep. Not, you know, not thorough as the, yeah, the author. Thorough. thorough as in like retentive. Thorough. Com completeness. <laughs> completeness. Yes. You're a completeness. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is probably the last time you're going to hear us talk about this, but uh, February 27th, we are having a party at a grand villa in Kidani village. So if you've never seen what a grand villa looks like, and you've always wanted to, and you were afraid to take the DVC tour, we are going to have a little open house on February 27th. We have two time slots that you can get tickets for. There's a one to two, and then a two to three. Uh, we ask that you get a ticket, so we kind of have a head count. We can balance out, you know, how many people are going to be in the room at each time. We don't want it, you know, too full, because we want you to be able to you know, enjoy the experience, too. Uh, we'll be giving away things there. Um I have an entire suitcase of things to give away uh, at this uh, great uh, little adventure that we're going on. Yep. Uh, so uh, I mean, if you're going to be in town, I highly recommend uh, that you could, uh, you could go to any one of the, you go to DisneyParksPodcast.com, go to any one of the podcast show notes in the last five weeks or so, three, four weeks, I guess, maybe. Uh, and there's a little ticket thing you can do, uh, for, get your tickets there. Uh, and there's also been links in the newsletter is another reason you need to sign up for the newsletter if you don't. So last time you hear us talk about that before we talk about our next event. Did you guys know that not only can you hear us on DisneyParksPodcast.com, you can catch our Tuesday 8 p.m. Eastern time blabs and watch us live. You can also find us on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, soon on Google uh, Music. But did you know? And Sorcerer Radio. And Sorcerer Radio. We're going to talk about them in a little bit. We can also listen to us on Sorcerer Radio. But we are also available on the internet in the United Kingdom, no less. Uh, good at, day. Oh, that's good day. No, that's Australian. <laughs> uh, at www.wlor.net. W R O C K. It's crazy. So www.wlor.net is a 24-hour online radio station. And Sunday evenings, you can hear us talking about Disney parks. And you want to check that out over there? We'd be more than happy to uh, to have you give that a whirl. But we want to make sure that we say that yeah. and uh, let the good folks over at W Rock uh, just – we appreciate being over there. We're very excited. It's a, it's a very fun experience that we're, uh, we're experimenting with. And so I'm very humbled that they invited us over there. So we're the only Disney show on, on a rock station. LOR.net. So yeah. <laughs> All Rocking the hits in the, the USA. Time. That's yeah. right. R-O-C-K on the yeah, N-E-T. Uh, yeah, exactly. All right. So and now, Disney Parks Podcast News. California is a little jealous. Yeah, that's what it is. I think so. I think they're really not happy with their 60th anniversary party. So, <laughs> Disney California Adventure is now going to have a food and wine festival 
coming in the weekends of April. I guess they're not getting the 90-day experience, but they're going to get at least a, a month of it. So the Disney California Adventure Park will soon be filled with even more fabulous food and an awakening of the senses when the Disney California Adventure Food and Wine Festival begins April 1st. This is a month-long festival taking place during the weekends in April, and it will celebrate some of the best of the delicious California cuisine. A distinguishing feature will be a new festival marketplaces where guests can sip and savor delicious flavors from throughout the state of California. Mm-hmm. This sounds very familiar. Like I've seen this somewhere else. I, I've, I, yeah, this sounds. Yeah, where have I seen this? I don't know. The Disney California Adventure Food and Wine Festival will also include culinary demonstrations, appearances by celebrity chefs, and informative seminars. I really am I'm getting deja vu at this event. <laughs> they will have more information to share with us soon, including how you can reserve your seat at the premium experiences taking place during the festival. So mark your calendars now for the Disney California Adventure Food and Wine Festival. They really have to shorten the name of that. Beginning April 1st at Disney's California Adventure Park. I think they used the word Disney California Adventure Park a gazillion times in that uh, press release. Can't help it. They have yeah. to. It's nomenclature. It's what they do. It's. Uh, I, I'm surprised they're really not doing it for the entire month. I, I'm surprised they're just limiting it to weekends. But I guess this is like a little trial, uh, um, you know, a little test because I don't. I've never. I don't remember them doing this. Do you? No, this is actually brand new. This is this is something that I think bore was born out of the incredible success that we're having on the the uh, food and wine East Coast. Yeah, and yeah. they want to have it on the West Coast, and I'm fine with that. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, sure. Uh, I think that if they want to have that over there, they should they should deal with the crowds and and mm. all that stuff just like we deal with it here. And so then they yeah. can be a destination location and they'll have to go through all the things that we go through. So yeah, I think it's a yeah. great idea. Yeah. Non-sarcastically, yeah. I still think I still think it's a great idea. I'd love yeah. to go visit. I, I, it well. is a good idea. Yeah. And I think they've uh you know there's a lot of um you know chefs out on the West Coast that maybe have been reluctant to come to our Flower Garden Food and Wine. Uh but now can pop into Disney, uh, you know, relatively quickly, you know, if they, they got, you know, things that they have to do in their own uh, restaurants and stuff. So they may get some interesting chefs popping in there, you know, um, maybe something, you know, if it works out well, maybe they'll do it for a whole month, you know, do then a whole 30 days next time around. And right. maybe we're going to be <laughs> making a trip to the uh, West coast for, for their, California Adventure Food and Wine Festival. I think it's a great idea. It also yeah. it, it also is much easier for celebrities in general yeah, sure. to go over there because yeah. it's it's really not that it's not impossible for celebrities to go through the Food and Wine Festival. Why I was there a couple of years ago and I was one table over from Will Wheaton and he was mm. he was at Food and Wine. Right. I think right. that I think this is something that uh, that celebrities will also be able to enjoy a little bit more. So I think it's great. Good call. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So for those of you out there who love Easter, Easter eggs and Easter egg hunts, the Easter egg extravaganza is going to be continuing all throughout Disney parks on both coasts. The exciting news is that those of you who have enjoyed the egg extravaganza each spring at the Disney parks are going to be very excited to know that it will be returning to the Disneyland Resort at Disneyland Park and... Disney's California Adventure Park, as well as the downtown Disney District. So they get three opportunities, three different areas for that. The exceptional exceptional event will also, of course, be taking place here at Epcot and Walt Disney World. So here's what you can expect. Man, this press release is getting old quick. Here's what you can (laughs) expect from March 2nd until the 22nd, 2016, or while supplies last, which basically is around the 15th. You can search for your special hidden eggs themed all around uh, Disney characters, and you can record your discoveries by placing the corresponding sticker to the specially themed egg extravaganza map that uh, represents that location. Maps and stickers can be purchased for $5.95 plus tax. 
uh, at the following parks and locations and reminders, no discounts apply. Those of you who are trying to save money, Disney, tisk tisk. So if you're going to Disneyland, you can go to the Disney California Adventure Park, Elias and Company, Humphrey Service and Supplies, Off the Page, Oswald's, Sarge's Surplus Hut, and Treasures in Paradise. At Disneyland Park, you can visit Disneyana, Disney Showcase, It's a Small World Toy Shop, Little Green Men's Store Command, Pieces of Eight, Pioneer Mercantile, and Stromboli's. Now at the downtown Disney District, you can go to Anna and Elsa's Boutique, D Street, Disney Pin Traders, Wonderground Gallery, and the World of Disney Store. You can also get your maps at the hotels of the Disneyland Resorts, Ac- Acorns, Gifts, and Goods at Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa, Mickey in Paradise at Disney's Paradise Pier, and the Fantasia Shop at the Disneyland Hotel. Here wow. at Walt Disney World, oh, that's a lot of mouthful, right? Here at Walt Disney World, you can go to Epcot and get your maps at Penn Central, Port of Entry, which is the Showcase Plaza, Heritage Manor at the American Adventure, and World Traveler back at the International Gateway. So you get your map, you go around, you find all the eggs, you place it on the corresponding spot on the map, and then you can redeem your map. Now, whether you choose to just hunt for the eggs or not, You can return your map to a redemption location uh, at Elias and Company at Disney's California Adventure, the Disney Showcase at Disneyland Park, the World of Disney Store at the Downtown Disney District, or at the Disneyland Resort or Port of Entry at Epcot before April 2nd to pick up your surprise pin. Are you excited to see what this year's surprise pin collection of eggs will look like? It's not going to be a pin, you think? Yeah, it's gonna be a pen. Yeah, yeah, it's always a pen. So, uh, a, what, what are they charging for this again? Fifteen, five, five ninety-five actually. Yeah, five ninety-five. Yeah, it's always gonna be a pen. Yeah, be a pen. Be a great pen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wonder how many people just do this and then just go get the pen. Just give me the pen. Probably a lot. They go five ninety-five yeah. and they go, oh wow, cool. And then can I have my pen, please? Yeah. Uh, you know, Park Hopper Sid and I are not going to be those people. We're going to be going around and. Finding it and getting our pins. Yeah. 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 That'd be fun. Yeah. I'm not into the uh, egg hunt thing there. Oh, boo. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey, uh, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, Sorcerer Radio is celebrating their 15th anniversary this month. And they're going to have a lot of awesome shows. And if you don't know what Sorcerer Radio is, I think you should go over there and check them out. You could go check them out. Uh, just Google Sorcerer Radio. And what it is, it's an online radio station that plays Disney music. And when they're not playing Disney music, they have great podcasts like ours and Web Geeks and uh, WW Tiki Room and Disney, uh, WDW Up the Dark. They got a ton of great podcasts. But they also play a lot of great uh, Disney music uh, all day long, too. Uh, you can even tweet them and request songs and things like that. But uh, go check them out because they're celebrating 15 years, probably one of the longest online radio, uh, Disney radio stations uh, that's been around, uh, serving up music uh, to us for a long, long time. So, right. um, yeah, go check them out. Show them a little love this month because uh, they're having a nice anniversary. Right. Uh, we have some bad news. Uh, there's a lot of construction going over at the wilderness because they are putting in those beautiful uh, new DUVCs that we're going to want to get our little mitts on soon. I'm hoping they put in a nice grand villa over there, too. You know, because that may be a good place for a party next. But uh, due to all this ongoing refurbishment at the Disney Wilderness Lodge, the boat rentals are no longer available. Uh, So don't go there. Uh, The marina's kind of been temporarily shut down. Um, The bike barn at Disney's Fort Wilderness uh, is now where you can go do that. Or you can shoot over to the Contemporary, the Grand Floridian, the Polynesian, any other seven seas bay lake um resort <laughs> we'll have uh some boats for you to rent <laughs> um so go check that out um i always liked going to that marina because uh i kind of like spinning around on my little mouse boat <laughs> out in the uh bay lake nice they still do that yeah. there yeah they still have the little mouse boats that you can race around oh, yeah. the bay lake yeah yeah I uh well I usually get yelled at for going too fast. Shocker. Uh, in the no wake zone. Yeah, no wake zone. Shocker. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hey, if the uh, you know the regular launch boat can speed through there, why can't I? You know. I think it has to do with when they give you the safety protocol. They say don't speed around and do donuts. Yeah. Well, that's too bad. <laughs> uh, I paid the money. I'm gonna have the fun. There you go. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, also, we want to remind you to visit Magic Your Band over at magicyourband.com. Uh, they will make nice little sticky things for your uh, Magic Band. Uh, they make a two-piece, which uh, kind of you know still leaves a little Mickey uh, revealed, or they make a one-piece that kind of goes over that. They can print your name on it. You can print happy anniversaries on it and birthdays and all those kind of crazy things. They, could, uh, they completely customize them. They have over 100 different designs to choose from. Uh, and upon checkout, use the coupon code Disney Parks Podcast and you will save uh, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10% off your purchase. So uh, go check them out at Magic Your Band. All right. So if you are excited about going over to Tony's favorite park over at Disney's Animal Kingdom, uh, we've, we're very excited because the Lion Guard Adventure has opened. So if you've seen the hit TV movie, The Lion Guard, Return of the Roar on Disney Channel, you do not want to miss this new activity that's over at the Animal Kingdom. Guests will be able to become honorary members of the Lion Guard in a brand new experience called The Lion Guard Adventure. Started, uh, <laughs> opened up. I know it's crazy, right? It started on February 7th, and this interactive experience allows young guests, I guess that rules me out, to explore the park in search of five main characters from the Lion Guard. Keon, Bunga, Fuli, uh, Beshti, and Onu, uh, who are represented, represented as colorful statues that are perfect for a kid-sized photo op. The experience is, uh, encourages and interest in protecting animals and caring for nature. Now, once they complete the adventure, each child could take a special pledge to become an honorary member of the Lion Guard and receive a special baton. This activity is currently scheduled through late March. So that's pretty cool. So this is just temporary. This is not going to stay, stick around? Yeah, no, we talked about this when they when they yeah. mentioned this. This is not meant mm-hmm. to be a, because uh, it was just based off a movie. And I, yeah. I think they're doing a couple different things. Obviously, this has a potential to become a TV series, mm. uh, and then and then it might become more of a permanent thing. But for right now, it's just a little interaction tie-in with with the movie, and uh, you know, it's something cool. It's not meant to be permanent. And I and I think that the um, wilderness explorers thing is still going on. I think this is just mm. something to do. Has any of those locations closed down because of the construction? Maybe, and this is kind of. Like filling in a little bit? I don't think many of the locations closed down from the Wilderness Explorers because mm. Camp Mini Mickey was a foregone conclusion by the time the yeah. Wilderness Explorers opened. And right. since the Explorer thing deals with mainly the animals and mm. they're really only renovating around the, the little lake right outside of um, Expedition Everest, I don't think it really affects. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you're the Animal Kingdom expert. I mean, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm far from it, my friend. That's all you. You were there when it was just Dude. dirt. I was there when it was just dirt, but I haven't been back since. Maybe, maybe that's maybe that's I not true. Too much dirt. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. And hey, while we have just a moment, uh, we want to thank all of you who are watching live on Blab, and we to thank we want to thank all of you who are watching uh, on YouTube or watching us live on Facebook or. You know, a lot of the folks are downloading our podcast, listening on iTunes, and we want to thank you guys so much for listening to us and and watching us and being a part of the Disney Parks podcast experience. And we are trying uh, our dead level best to bring you entertaining, fun shows, bring you great guests, and we're trying to put on some really cool events that you could come to, much like the party that we're having in a couple weeks. And one of the things that we realize that we need to do for that to happen is we need to start uh, getting some support from you guys. So if you wouldn't mind, if you love what we do, if you want to help support us, uh, please go to patreon.com, Disney Parks Podcast, and support the show. There's a link on our website. We put it out on Facebook, and uh, we tweet it out a little bit. Please show your support for what we do. If you want to give a dollar a month, if you want to give 
uh, more than that a month, we greatly appreciate it. And what we've done is we put together a great list of rewards for people who want to support the show. And we, uh, we ha- I know we have one Patreon and we have a box that is going to be sent out. Has it been sent out yet? Or are you waiting for my book? Uh, no, we're waiting for the pen that we're going to get. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's right. We got to do the pen. So, the pen in February. Yeah, yeah. So we get the pen and we'll put it in there and we're going to send it out. So uh, that's just one of the cool things we get to do. And we appreciate every bit that you guys do to help support the show. And just know that we're going to turn all of that around and we're going to uh, to do some great things this year. So patreon.com slash Disney Parks Podcast. Yeah. And when I said you had to get uh, tickets for the February event, the free tickets, it's just so that we have a head count, like I said. Um, it may look like you're actually buying something, but you're actually not. There's no charge to you. The charge is to us. <laughs> it's all on us, baby. Okay, uh, one of my favorite places in uh, all of Walt Disney World now is uh, Starbucks, and they have a special offering. And I love when they do these little special offerings. So beginning uh, February 16th, the Main Street Bakery at the Magic Kingdom, the Fountain View at Epcot, and Creature Comforts at the Animal Kingdom will be offering a variety of items as part of the Starbucks 2016 winter offerings, including smoked butterscotch latte and a Tiva citrus green tea latte. Uh, smoked butterscotch sounds pretty good. I think I might try one of those. Yeah. Yeah, I am a peppermint mocha kind of person, and uh, uh, just to let you know, you don't have to just get that at Christmas time. They have that year round at all Starbucks. Just ask for the peppermint mocha and they will make one for you. It's the same thing as the white mocha, except they're putting a little squirt of uh, peppermint in it. That's all it is, folks. <laughs> uh, I have the peppermint at my house, actually, and I squirted it in my own coffee, just to let you know. Spoilers, how, T. Yeah. Spoilers. <laughs> That's how much of a fan I am of the peppermint mocha. All right, as we mentioned uh, last week, the Disney by the Numbers iOS app is back. Uh, And it is free this time. It is making a comeback, and it is free. And uh, I suggest that you go to iTunes, go search for Disney by the Numbers. Uh, You'll see the app, and it is free. It has all facts that you can use in the queue line and things like that. Uh, And now you can even get a link to the book and uh, order the book uh, straight from your app. So there it is, folks. Brilliant. Go check it out. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Totally worth the price. Yep. And I have to thank my friend Joe for that. Yep. Thank yeah. Thank you, Joe. Great app. It's a good update. Yeah. It's all been modernized. It's all modernized. Been- Excellent. All shiny new code. So fans of ESPN, Wide World of Sports at Walt Disney World Resort uh, are going to be very excited because we have a little bit more news about the expansion. Uh, Disney is about to uh, break ground on a new state-of-the-art cheerleading and dance team competition venue at ESPN, Wide World of Sports. Uh, They've worked very strong relationships and worked alongside Varsity Spirit to create a space specifically designed for cheerleading and dance competitions. The venue will provide competition space, warm-up and practice areas, along with the areas for judges and officials. With its flexible design, the new venue will be capable of more multi-sport and entertainment events as well. Construction on the state-of-the-art venue is expected to be completed by mid-2017. Okay, so here's question number one. Um, <laughs> question number one is, uh, listen, I think it's a good idea uh, because I, I think they deserve their own little place over there. But, you know, a lot of the times they used uh, the Indiana Jones um, a, a stadium right. for those events. Right. So the question you now beg you and ask yourself is, is something happening to that arena that they're going to build this or are they just not? Oh, they fed up with having these people in the park uh, and they want them over there somewhere. I believe the answer to the first question is no. 
Because I believe the answer to the second question is, uh-huh. if they build it, they will come. Mm-hmm. So, Do you think they needed something bigger than what they were already were using and having? Yes. And it won't interrupt the get. Okay, so stop and think. So if they were using the uh, stunt show, uh, the you know the Indiana Jones stunt spectacular, epic stunt spectacular. To I, use, the I left. I, I literally left the park many occasions when they were right. there. So they're closing down a good chunk of Hollywood studios. Yes, they cannot afford to lose any more uh, attractions or yeah. space for guests. Mm-hmm. So what makes sense now? Granted, this is all happening in two years. Right. But granted, they're 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 paving the way for a space that can not only a house bigger, better, badder events for the cheer people and the mm. spirit dancers and the celestial voodoo artists, whatever you want to put in that building, you can do. But the trick is now you have a designated space that could bring in more groups. So whereas they didn't want to interrupt guest traffic too much, and they could only maybe do one show a month. I don't know what the number is, but maybe one show a month that would interrupt the guests. Now they can do a show a week and it has no impact except increased revenue, increased guest throughput into the parks, increased guest stays at the hotels. Yeah. Which also leads me to believe, um, you know, we know that they're building some kind of hotel facility over there, which leads me to believe that that thing is going to be super used by things like this. You know, the cheerleaders come, it's like, you know, just throw them all in there. It'll be the closest thing to uh, ESPN. And then, you know, you, they can have their own little private bus that just goes back and forth from, you know, this resort to ESPN all day long. Absolutely. So, yeah. Just right. think about all those days in the <laughs> parks with all those cheerleaders. Yeah. I Like I said, there were two times, I think, I think it was last year that I actually walked out of the studios because I, I I just didn't want to put up with them. You know, they were all, uh, 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 you know, like you know, screaming and yelling and, uh, you know. It's, and, it's, and it's our version. Of, it's our version of the nation of Brazil. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Now, if you're Brazilian and you're listening to the show <laughs> first, hear me out. I do not mean to besperse your incredibly lovely nation and your incredibly awesome people, but something weird happens when you guys all come to Disney. Yeah. You start chanting, going crazy. And it's awesome. I love the, I love it. I love the spirit. I love, I think it's great, but it tends to interrupt the flow of like main street USA yeah. when the music and the, the street atmosphere people have to stop what they're doing because there's the cheering and the chanting going on. And that's starting to happen more and more with the cheerleaders. Right. And for those of you who don't live near Walt Disney World, let me explain what cheerleaders mean to Walt Disney World. Outside of increased income, uh, lots and lots and lots of kids yeah, all the time. And there's nothing wrong with kids. I love kids. But I would like to be able to go to the park at least once and not have to deal with conglomerates of people yeah. that are screaming and chanting and clapping and all that craziness. Just, Man, you crazy. know, am I, do I sound jaded? Yeah. I don't mean to sound jaded. Yes. No, <laughs> no, I, yeah, I think it's a good thing. I, I, you know, like I said, it, it made me enough to leave the park. So uh, if they're going to contain them over there uh, on that side of the Disney world, that's fine. You know, I I just have at it. I b- build two of them. I say, <laughs> you know, and yes. then build a hotel next to it too. This way, you get them all over there, and they'll all stay over there, and that'll be that. Anyway, uh, Epcot uh, Flower and Garden is coming up, and uh, let's talk a little bit about Epcot Flower and Garden merchandise because you can't have a festival unless you have merchandise. What the hell are you gonna sell? So this year, the Epcot. International Flower and Garden Festival will run from March 2nd to May 30th. And once again, the festival merchandise will be available at the Festival Center as well as select kiosks throughout Epcot. This year, merchandise, I think for the first time ever, will feature Figment. For the Flower and Garden Festival, Figment? Yes. Uh, Yes. He's been on for food and wine. 
But not for Flower and Garden. Not for Flower and Garden. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think uh, Kevin John did a Flower and Garden uh, piece of art two years ago uh, with Figment and the Flower and Garden Festival. But he wasn't featured on all the festival merchandise like he is this year. So that's, I think that's good. So you'll get the, the figment and the festival logo, all, all that stuff. It'll be on the clothing, the merchandising, the decorative plot, uh, pots. Uh, there'll be limited edition retail magic bands with a, size of, uh, a lot size of 2,500. And uh, it'll have a figment on it. Hopefully it'll do something cool to turn styles, like light up purple and make some figment sounds. Um, there'll be a ladies' topiary collection, which will include... Uh, uh, different apparel for the ladies. There'll be a two-pin set and uh, uh, Trevis tumblers, which are some nice mug things that you can get. Uh, the guys' garden collection includes apparel and a hat. Um, it's a little wonky. And then there's also <laughs> the Star Wars garden items, including Yoda and a new Dooney and Burke purse. Of course. Because nothing said flower and garden like leather hung on your shoulder. But. Okay, but. It's going to feature figment. So that might be a purchase for the Donnie yeah. House. All right. That's true. We'll feature figment. Uh, purchasing limits will apply. So don't go there and buy 300 of them and try and sell them on eBay because they're not going to let you. While supplies last, and keep in mind there are no discounts applied and separate admission is required to enter the Disney theme park, and the experience, of course, is subject to restriction and change without notice. So there you go. Flower yeah. and garden. Yeah. Now, the, the flip side of that is that's that's the merchandise for purchase for non-pass holders. And the piece mm. of news that I'm most excited about actually is the 2016 uh, Flower and Garden Festival is going to give pass holders a very special limited edition print by legendary Disney artist Don Ducky Williams. One of my favorite. Uh, I love his yeah. stuff. He's an incredible artist. Uh, he is the absolute favorite for our, our mutual friend, Rick. He's got several Ducky prints hanging up in his office. Uh, I should know I spent three years staring at him on the computer. Uh, so it looks like there's even more to celebrate at the festival because Disney's just revealed that the annual pass holders are going to receive an exclusive gift each month of the three month Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival. And it's not just any gift because it's going to be a special edition print drawn by legendary Disney artist Don Ducky Williams. You could come in once a month and collect all three. Uh, of course, Supplies are limited, and you can only claim one print per pass holder per month. So that means that Sarah and I could both get a print. Uh, mm -hmm. We can get all three prints, and we can get them. And, I, and I'm hoping that they're print size, and they're not yeah. like the little ones like you get with the uh, when you sign up to be a pass Yeah, and hopefully they're sizes that uh, is a normal frame size because a lot of times Disney makes things – it, which are, it's not a normal frame size. And right. then you, you got to go to like Michael's and get a oversized frame and then get a mat. It just, it gets, it, trust me. I, I have a lot of things that gets complicated, you know? So uh, it'll be nice. And I do like Ducky. I have a lot of Ducky stuff too from, right. he, he did a lot of stuff for um, the cruise line, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, I have some things from that. And he did a lot of stuff for uh, DVC too. When DVC, yeah. if you went online and listened to their pitch, they would send you a, a free gift, and it was usually a, a ducky print. Right. So he's done a lot of stuff for them. Yeah. It's good. All right. I This last piece of news just came in, and I'm not sure. Uh, I, I think it's about time, but I, I, I may miss it. Yeah. They could make something maybe not as good. If that's possible. So I'm kind of, I, I always get reluctant, like, ooh, you know, that's not bad, but they could put something worse in its place. True. 
just released hot off the press last piece of news that you're going to scratch your head kids after 10 years 10 years you ready dream along with mickey is coming to an end it is no more uh it will be ending soon uh i am sure once they announce the last day of the show there's going to be a mob scene to go every blogger is going to want to record this thing for the last time and you know get 35 angles of it you know sell it on dvd but it's being replaced with a show called mickey's royal friendship fair and this is how it goes so against the majestic backdrop of cinderella castle mickey mouse and his friends will welcome their favorite characters from some of disney's newest classics such as the prince and the frog Tangled, and you can't have a show without those two. Hmm. So, you can't have you can't have you can't have people without Frozen. Apparently, you can't. In Mickey's Royal Friendship Fair, Mickey and his troop of merrymakers have been preparing to host a joyous festival and have ventured far and wide to invite friends from other lands to join their celebration. From the land of bewitching bios. Goofy has invited Tiana and Naveen and Lewis to add a little spice of New Orleans jazz to the party. From the land of the Enchanted Woods, Donald brings some new friends he met at Snuggling Duckling, and Daisy introduces us to our special friends, Rapunzel and Flynn Rider. And then finally, Mickey shares a surprise with Minnie as he has traveled to the land of majestic mountains to invite Olaf, Anna, and Elsa, who contribute a blast of her icy magic. It all culminates in a grand dance as the merrymakers invite all the special guests to join the fun on the special day in the Magic Kingdom Park. So, making their first appearance by Tiana Rapunzel in a show on the castle stage, Mickey's Royal Friendship Fair brings to life beloved Disney stories, both classic and contemporary, in a new spectacular performance featuring an original song. Just one. (laughs) And memorable music, lively dancing, and special effects magic. So hopefully they're going to put some of these, you know, all this new equipment that they made, uh, you know, at, at the castle stage thing. You know, they have all the New lighting and smoke and all this other stuff I heard that they put. Let's see, you know, get the good news now. We'll see. My my one concern is the last three. Yeah, <laughs> frozen. Frozen. No, <laughs> no. It's really I shouldn't say it's negatively. Uh, the one thing about it is, is they say you know Disney characters classic and new. So I guess they're using Donald Daisy, you know, and Goofy. Yes. They're using the classics. classics to bring in the Yeah, they're the classics. And then they're bringing out three new characters, which that's great. But, you know, I, I really hate that they're not incorporating, you know, some of the other classic Disney characters. Like for 10 years, we've had Peter Pan and Captain Hook and we've had the princesses mm-hmm. and their princes. I, I don't want to get too far away from that. And I, and I don't want to necessarily just say, you know, let's all throw out the old and go with the new. But, you know. They're they're really making a push for, you know, this generation forward. And I think that's great. If it's a great show, I'm I'm sure it will be. I'm sure it'll be great. I'm sure it'll be phenomenal. Um, But, you know, I'm with you. I'm 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 genuinely concerned. However, you know, uh, the the magic lighting show with the castle show, with the with the. uh, projections show has knocked it out of the park since day one so i'm sure that disney's going to do a great job now that didn't almost cause park hopper said to wreck the car when she when i told her that but Mm. um yeah so anyway yeah so it'll be interesting but i i you know i think what they're trying to do is you know have our old friends that were you know the fab five uh introduce us to maybe characters that we're not uh familiar with you know, maybe there were people that, you know, the younger generation obviously know these newer characters, but maybe the old gen, older generation is not as familiar. 
So maybe they're trying to cross those two streams, you know, the old gen with the new gen and uh, do like a little mix up. Um, but I think there's, you know, I don't know. It, we'll have to see. I, it, it all depends on the show, the music um, and, uh, you know, what it what it brings. Uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, I, we've said this in the past. Um, the reason there is a castle show is to reset. Uh, kind of the land population it brings everybody to the middle uh, and kind of gets everybody out of the different land so that, you know, kind of resets the, the population. So it kind of disperses everybody a little bit and then everybody goes different ways when, once the show is over. So everything kind of gets all mixed up and shuffled uh, in a sense. And the same thing um, with fireworks at night, except that that gets everybody to the middle so they can throw you out of the park. Um, you know, so. It'll be good. It, it, we'll have to see, but I, I think they'll do fine. They spent a lot of money fixing up the middle of the park, the, the whole castle forecourt, uh, mm-hmm. the new lights, the new stage, the new everything. So uh, it'll be nice to see it on this uh, newer uh, arena, I guess. All right. Do we have anything else? No, I think that's it for the news. All right. All right. Uh, we just want to remind you that you can find us at DisneyParksPodcast.com. You can find us at Twitter at Disney Podcaster. We are on Facebook at Facebook.com forward slash Disney Parks Podcast. I think we might be in other places, but you can find us on uh, really on the web. Uh, we have everything on the web that you need. We have our show, the news, the notes, the sign up for the newsletter. Links to everything is all in one place at Disney Parks Podcast.com. So as we'd like to say around here, we will... See you in the parks. The Disney Parks Podcast is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company. All Disney parks, attractions, lands, shows, event names, etc. are registered trademarks of the Walt Disney Company. Like a boat out of the blue Fate steps in and sees you through